Let's consider the general case of a sequence that has been shifted by one place to the left. So let's just write out some of the terms of this sequence. Well, to get the first term, we let n equal 0. So I'll write that in here. If we let n equal 0, we get y sub 1. To get the next term, we let n equals 1. We will get y sub 2. Then we will get y sub 3, and so on. Now let's see how this sequence relates to the sequence y sub n. And uh, I'm going to write down the z transform of y sub n. We will be using that in the result. Okay, we'll just write down a few terms. We let n equal 0, so we get y0. Let n equal 1, we get y1. If we let n equals 2, we get y2, and so on. Notice that we could have got this sequence y sub n plus 1 by shifting this sequence one step to the left. So y1 would take the position of y0. So effectively we're uh, eliminating y sub 0. So our new first position is no longer y sub 0, it is y sub 1. Now we will need the z transform of y sub n, so I'll just write that down. So we've seen this many times before. We're summing from n equals 0 to infinity of our sequence, which is y sub n, multiplied by z to the power of minus n. Now let's get back to the z transform of our shifted sequence. So what do we do? Well, I'll write, use the summation notation. Um, we're summing from 0 to infinity of our sequence, which is y sub n plus 1, times z to the power of minus n. So we just stick our sequence in here like we did up here. Multiply by z to the minus n and sum. I'll just shift it over here. Now, um, if we put 0 in for n, we get y1 times z to the power of minus 0. Well, that's just z to the 0, which is 1. Next, we put 1 in for n, so we get y sub 2 multiplied by z to the power of minus 1, okay? So we just put 1 in for n. Next we put 2 in for n, and we get y sub 2 plus 1, or y sub 3, times z to the power of minus 2, and so on. Now we are going to relate this series to the one up here, so I just want to write in an extra term. Might be helpful. Notice that in this series, the subscript is, the sa is related to the power. So we're going to have to do something to this to get that relation so that we can work the z transform of y sub n into the z transform of y sub n plus 1. To do that, we will factorize z out of all of these terms. So what do we need here to get z to the minus 1? Well, we need z to the minus 2. Now you see we've got these matching values like we have up here. Okay, so z to the 1 by z to the minus 2 is z to the minus 1. And for this term we will have y3, z to the minus 3, etc. So, now you can see that this thing in here is the same as all of these terms. So, in other words, the thing inside the bracket is the z transform of y sub n minus these two terms. Okay, so you subtract these two terms from both sides of this equation. And you will get what's inside the brackets here. Now instead of z of y n, we can use the other notation. The z transform of the sequence y sub n can be written as big Y of z. It's a function of z. Okay, so big Y of z for this. Minus uh, y sub 0 minus y sub 1 z to the minus 1. Next, we multiply z into the bracket, so we get this here. You can see that the y1s will cancel out. Now let's get the z transform of the sequence y sub n plus 2. So this is the sequence y n shifted by the two places to the left. So here are the first few terms of this sequence. If we let n equal 0, we get y sub 2. If we let n equal 1, we get y sub 3, and so on. 
the sequence y sub n is y0, y1, y2, y3, etc. So you can see that if we shift this by two places to the left, y2 will become the first term. So we effectively eliminate these two terms. Okay, so let's get the z transform. Well, again, we have to sum the sequence y n plus 2 times z to the power of minus n from 0 to infinity. So when n is 0, we get y sub 2, z to the 0, well that's just y sub 2. When n is 1, we get y sub 1 plus 2, or y sub 3, times z to the minus 1. When n is 2, we get y sub 2 plus 2, or y sub 4, times z to the minus 2, and so on. Now we want these values to match, so that we can relate the z transform of y sub n plus 2 to the z transform of y sub n. So to make these match, we have to factorize z squared out of this. So z squared by z to the minus 3 will give us the z to the minus 1 that we need. And you can see that z squared by z to the minus 4 gives us z to the minus 2. So we have these matching values again. So here is z of y sub n, just applying this definition with um, y sub n. Okay, so we want the terms... that that begin with y sub 3, z to the minus 3. We just want all of those terms. That's what's inside the bracket here. So we have to take z of y sub n and subtract these terms to give us what we're after, which is the series beginning with y sub 3, z to the minus 3. But of course we can write z of y sub n as big Y of z. So we just need to subtract off these three terms, and that's what we have up here. Notice that the y2s will terms will cancel because we'll have z squared by z to the minus 2. So that's going to give us minus y2. And we just have to multiply z squared into this. We get z squared y of z minus z squared y0, and here we will get minus z y1. Now we can generalize this result to the case of the z transform of a sequence that is shifted by m places to the left. So if we look at the pattern up here, we can get an idea if we need to use this bigger formula. Uh, the shift here is 2, so that's the power. And that's the power that we have here. Um, okay, so this is m as well, actually. m is equal to 2. And then the power of z decreases by 1, so then we get z to the 1. But here we have to, we have many more terms to subtract off. So we have m, m minus 1, all the way down to the lowest power of z, which is, well, for our purposes, is 1. Um, okay, the shift is 2 here, so we have two terms to subtract off. The shift is m places, so we will have m terms to subtract off. So the power here is m, and the last power is 1, so we have m terms. And the subscript of y increases by 1 each time. Um, so you can see the last subscript is m minus 1, because we have m terms, and the first subscript is 0, 